Hello and welcome to Tipo's Development. In today's tutorial, we'll be creating a very simple technique which I commonly use to bulk out explosions and really show gameplay. We're going to be building a spherical explosion mesh. It's essentially a sphere with a Fresnel edge and a texture running over the top of it, with a bit of a faster slow motion going on it. These things are great for like bulking out an explosion and giving it a bit of volume. Um, it's very light on overdraw, being just a mesh, you're only gonna, if it's double sided, only get two layers of overdraw, which is fantastic. You won't have to spawn, you know, sort of like 20 or 30 particles all overlapping over the top of one another, creating a whole lot of overdraw. Um, it's also great for showing uh, gameplay, because uh, explosion, you know, spherical mesh is a very, you, you, well, you know what shape it is, right? So. When it goes out, you know exactly where it's going to s stop. So it's great for showing things such as like, this is the damage radius of your explosion, or a shock wave, or maybe your AOE slow, or anything like that. It's also um, extremely easy to make, which I like. Uh, uh, any lazy sort of simple technique that looks good, I'm I'm gonna use, and I'll, I'm certainly not against that. So let's get started. All right, guys, we need a drill from here. We're just exporting a simple sphere from our whatever 3d program just just nice default sphere created in whatever you got all right so what you want to do is select your sphere export it as an fbx name it i don't know volume explosion or whatever else you feel like naming it and put it wherever you want now open up your content browser inside of unreal and import that fbx once you have imported your FBX, I want you to create a new material that we will be applying to said mesh. Name that, I don't know, volume explosion or whatever else you want to call it. Alright, just open up that material you just created and select the big, big node there at the start. Still don't know what the name is, whatever, big, big, big start node, there's no other node like it. Select that, and make sure to set its blend mode to additive. We just want this effect to add on top of our scene. If you're not familiar what, with what additive means, it's essentially if you've worked in Photoshop or any other kind of kind of program, like paint program with layers, it's essentially when you set a layer to screen or lighten. Essentially, any darker colors just do not display. Um, it, it's essentially just adding the value to the scene. So say your scene is a value of 1.2, this is this is just going to add on top of that. So say we've got a texture that's 2, that's going to become 2.2 or whatever. Oh, sorry, 3.2. This is a bad comparison. Just just essentially look at what, what screen is in Photoshop. Um, and it, it's, it's essentially that. Alright, now scroll over to our texture sample that we've got here. Um, oh, right, uh, I've got to mention this. Um, so, I, I've linked the texture node tree just down below. I recommend downloading that and just creating all the nodes I got there um, in my tree yourself inside of your own material. Um, it, it'll just make this whole tutorial a lot easier if you do that. Because you can essentially play around with your nodes and see, see what they do. Um, Alright, let's get started. So. Really, all that's going on here is we've got a we've got a texture sample. So in other words, just our, our texture. We've got a panner plugin into it, so we can scroll this texture sideways. A texture coordinate node plugged into the side of it. All this does is allow us to do the tiling. So you know, set it to tile three, four times, whatever, however many times you want. Next, we just got a particle color plugged into this thing because we're going to be emitting this as a particle. Uh, the particle color node here just allows us to say, tint the color over the life of the particle, or mess around with this alpha over the life of the particle. So say, you want your explosion to come in at full opacity, and then fade out over its lifetime. So, running over along the graph now to the right, we've got just a simple Fresnel. So, the Fresnel, by default, actually fades the inside of your mesh. We actually want the opposite, we just want to fade the edges of our mesh instead because we're just created if we just had like a simple sphere going outwards they, they just look, look a little, little bad you know when you, you can see the edges of your sphere we, we, we at least want to try create the illusion of it being an explosion so all I've done is got a Fresnel node here plugged into a 1 minus all this does is essentially invert the Fresnel 
and then we're multiplying that into our graph. So it's just this will essentially just make the edges of our mesh um, like black in value. So obviously if you understand how alpha works, white is fully opaque and black is, you know, invisible. So this is just essentially dyeing the edges of our mesh black so they appear invisible. And after that I've just got a quick little depth fade node. All this does is, so when we have a mesh collide with ground or any other 3D objects in the scene, it'll just essentially give it a little sort of soft fade buffer. I don't know what to call this. So essentially it's like a... You don't want your meshes or particles just clipping with the ground because it kind of breaks the illusion of them being there, like a fake looking smoke particle or fake explosion mesh or whatever. It, you can see it's a mesh just clipping in with the ground and it looks a little ugly. This essentially just makes it so your mesh alphas out a little bit when it starts to collide with the ground, essentially creating like a miniature gradient going upwards from the object it's colliding and creating like a little bit of fade around where the, the collision, where, where the collision is on the mesh. Um, so I've just got that multiplied in. So the depth fade node is much like the Fresnel in this way, where it's essentially, if you think about this in values, um, we're just multiplying so uh, the edges of this mesh when it collides with another mesh will go down to zero alpha right and then it'll create a, a slight little gradient that goes up to one slowly out from where that mesh is colliding and now we're multiplying that over the top of our graph remember zero being invisible and one being completely visible so and then we're just plugging that into all right we're now done with the material now just right click inside of your content browser and create a new particle system. Alright, open that thing up. Now, inside of the particle system, under emitters you'll see uh, a, a big square that says particle emitter inside of it. I, I don't know what to call that, but it's essentially our particle system. Now, it should be a blank little space underneath particle emitter. Right click on that thing, and go down to type data, and select new mesh data. This will just essentially allow us to emit our mesh out from this particle emitter instead of billboards. Now click that. Alright, after you've created that mesh data node underneath your particle emitter, just go click on it and go over to details and on the mesh tab just make sure to navigate to your mesh and set that node to your mesh. This will allow your particle emitter to shoot out your mesh. Now, uh, you, you should be seeing it, but it, your particle emitter is probably spewing out a whole lot of particles right now. We're, we're going to fix that in just a second. Alright guys, we're just going to fix up that spawning issue. So just open open up um, your spawn node, set your rate to, to zero, and now open up the little burst tab down below. And under burst list, just cr create a new new burst, hit the little plus sign next to, next to burst list. And just, we just want to emit one particle. Good. Now, now it should just be spitting out one particle over and over and over again. Look, looks, looks fantastic. Alright, next just set this thing's lifetime by hitting the lifetime uh, node underneath and setting it to only about 0 0.5. Uh, we just want this thing to burst out very quickly so it doesn't need a very long lifetime. Also, make sure to set your spawn to only loop once. We only, we, we only want this to be a one-off effect. We don't want this to keep just like emitting over and over and over and over and over again. So, um, you just do that under required and just make sure to set your emitter loops to only one. This will just ensure it only plays once. Now, um, if you're, make sure you've got a color of a life node. I believe it's by there by default, but just in case, um, just make sure to add one. So, we what we do under here is just make sure to make your alpha over life go from start at one and end at zero. I've, I've posted my graph just so you guys can sort of see what I've set up for my fade out. I, I tend to like to skew my my graphs for alpha sort of in this little downward arc. It always it always fades out a lot nicer. If you have a very linear zero to one, it can tend to look a little strange, um, almost poppy in a way. 
it's uh, I'll explain the, the weird thing that goes on here um, as to why that is in another video but just just for now just set it up like this now just create a size by life node because we want this thing to scale out from you know a small scale and explode outwards very quickly all right um, to make this simple I have just posted a picture as you can probably see up on the screen now just what my graph looks like. Essentially, we just want this thing starting out very small, exploding out extremely quickly, and then slowly scaling for the rest of its lifetime. So it sort of goes boom. I, I, I don't know why. The only way I can think of describing that is with a sound effect, but that's all I could come up with. <laughs> just imagine. Um, God, I'm the worst teacher ever. Alright, now let's check out what this thing actually looks like out in the world. You can probably see it up in the little little display port there, but it's always good to check it out in the world just to see what it looks like, really. Um, Alright, so hopefully I didn't screw up and miss anything, um, but put your particle emitter out in the world, select it, and make sure to hit G. This will turn off the UI of uh, selecting things. You you'll probably notice um, if you select your particle emitter and hit reset emitter that this is the way to play your emitter over and over again every time you click it you'll probably notice it's uh, highlighted yellow uh, that, that's because you have it selected and the UI is still on if you hit G that'll go away and you can hit reset emitter and you you should actually see what your effect looks like instead of it having like a yellow overlay so as you see here it's just a very quick explosion sphere if you put it like a box inside it you'll notice like it does look quite volumetric you can you can see it from any angle you can sort of like move around this thing and it looks pretty right you if you look close to the ground you can you can notice that it's uh it's not actually colliding with the ground at all like it's got that nice gradient sort of softly softly fading it out when the the mesh gets to actually touching the ground so that looks pretty good so yeah um you can use this effect in many different things um i've used it for a lot of explosions in the past to just give an explosion volume without actually having to use much overdraw um i actually took this technique originally from i think i saw it on a character called jinx if that's what she's called and uh league of legends they had this big like smiley face uh, smiley face explosion and i thought it looked pretty cool so i i went spewing that all over Path of Exile. It, it, it was actually a method I used to optimize a lot of effects um, in a game for, for Path of Exile if you haven't seen it. Yeah, I've posted an image up of sort of it anyway. I've, I used it on this uh, sort of Rain of Arrows explosion skill that people could cast a million times a second. So it had to be quite optimized. So yeah, it's a great way of creating volume with very little overdraw. It's very performant and it Honestly, it looks pretty good, and it's very good for displaying gameplay. So, anyway, I hope this was at least a somewhat useful technique to some people. It it looks very simple, but I s don't see it very often, surprisingly. Um, I, I, f I thought it, you know, being very simple would be used a lot, but apparently not. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe even some of you, you veterans out there might want to try this one out. So, I hope this was useful to some of you anyway. And I'll I'll have more videos to come. Um, oh, and uh, of course, make sure to add me to Twitter. I've, I've got that posted below too. And I, I need some followers, man. I only I only just started this thing. All right, thanks, guys.